What's up beautiful people, it's Indarama, welcome to the channel. Today we have this very interesting video and it's titled Candice Owens Q&A, Crazy Liberals and Black Lives Matter. Interesting, I'm excited to check this one out. Let's check it out. As a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next question. Great statement. <laughs> That's a statement. Oh. That's a statement. Okay. Oh my God. You know your identity. You're not confused. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you very much for your statement. Hi, how are you? Hi, I was wondering where you got your um, statement, your statistic about people who transition, detransition, as well as the, that you are infertile after transitioning. Because yeah. I myself take hormones. I do testosterone injections, mm -hmm. and I've gone through a lot of doctors and none of them told me that was true okay so on my podcast i actually cite all the sources if you look up my name and my podcast you can i mean it's in so many articles and also as i said sexchangeregret.org actually lists all of these statistics with their sources um so obviously i don't I, I can't give you a hyperlink as i'm standing on the stage but you can definitely find it on my podcast and you can find it on sexchangeregret.com thank you for the question that was like, the first question we got there hi um, according to Britannica, the definition of the nuclear family has expanded with the advert of same-sex marriage. Children in nuclear families may be couples biological or adopted offspring. Does this mean that the merch you sell supporting you know, nuclear families means that you support trans couples adopting, gay couples adopting, and spreading this rhetoric that you yeah. talk about? So you're talking about the expansion of definition. So right now they've expanded the definition of woman to include biological males. This gets back into what I was saying earlier about the left controlling linguistics and just pretending that, okay, a nuclear family can now be two trans parents um, that are adopting a child. That is not the nuclear family unit that I am talking about. Um, I believe that I am talking about marriage between a male and a female, which naturally and biologically produces children. Uh, so no, I do not take that new updated definition of what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a nuclear family. Thank you for your question, though. Hi. Hello. My question is a little bit of a different speed. Uh, earlier today, you mentioned uh, Patricia Colors or somebody from the BLM movement, and you said that her only qualifying factors for speaking about different things and issues was because she was black. And during the White House hearing, about white supremacy, you was mm -hmm. on that. And a question was asked whether white supremacy is a threat or not. And your only qualification to speaking on that was being black. So what do you say to people that say I, they're being a hypocrite? Yeah, so I didn't say on this stage that Patrice's only qualification was being black. I said that people gave her tens of millions of dollars, had no idea where it was going to go, and were happy to do it because she was pirating. She just kept saying Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. It was stupid. They lost their money, bad investment. Oh well, too bad, so sad. Um, regarding qualifications to speak on what's harming black America, you just have to be able to examine actual statistics, right? Are you, are you telling me, would you honestly say that when you walked into this room today, you were afraid that white supremacy was gonna kill you? I ask this to black people to be honest. Are you afraid that a Klansman is gonna come down the, down the street on horseback and pick you up? Be honest. Um, I'm not, I'm personally not afraid. Okay, but. so that's it. So when I was speaking at the congressional testimony, I was saying, my experience being black in America, I don't know any black people that are fearful to walk down the street because they think a Klansman's gonna come get them, right? But I can list you tons of black people that grow up in poverty, that grow up in the hood, that grow up around gang culture that are fearful when you examine black on black mm -hmm. crime rates. When, you, when I was just talking about illiteracy rates, I said that I could list a hundred things the black community is suffering from today before I got to white supremacy, and yet the focus and the emphasis in the school system has been to brainwash us to believe that white people want to kill us around every single corner, mm -hmm. and I think that that's a harmful ideology because it doesn't allow us to actually focus on the Whoa. things that we're suffering from. You know, number uh -huh. one, I would say, is father absence. We need to get our families back together. We have to stop letting the government raise us. Um, I do and that is true i mean these clips put together here just doesn't get old at all now let's even talk about this what's wrong with black black community or the black problems or the most important issues that should be talked about or dealt with in the black community absent of fathers at home or fatherlessness at home black on black crime 
children not having the right education children not going to school lots of other things that are going on in the community and that needs to be uh, talked about people don't want to face the real issues and i've said it before lots of people would rather live in denial than face the truth because they are so consumed or it is more convenient to live and dwell in lies because lots of people or especially blacks are fed with the narrative that white person somewhere doesn't want them or something that happened years ago is what is still affecting them today yet we still see tons of blacks who have risen above the limitation or boundaries that have been set or people have been told or people tell them that they can't attain because something happened with their ancestors years ago so therefore the white man don't want them to succeed it just don't make sense people really need to educate themselves more and better but of course the left one is pushing the narrative to make and condition blacks to think or see themselves as victims rather than victors and that kind of mindset is what i just don't understand how blacks can't even do away with it's high time they look within and fix those issues instead of thinking that somebody somewhere don't like you because of your skin so skin color or somebody somewhere is the cause of your problem or because of something that happened years ago but yeah let's go on um i do believe uh, i agree with some of the things you just said but at the end of your point you just mentioned a father absence and stuff like that yeah uh and studies are actually shows that black men who are actually in their home participate with their children more than any other race yeah so great so what do you what you just said is a fallacy then no no no, no. i'm talking about when there's not a black father in the home oh. right so every natural ill follows in the black community so when you separate the black family if you look at statistics between black families that are together and white families that are together the poverty rate i mean it, they're they're both doing well mm -hmm. it's a two-point difference between white and black families when you remove and you break down the black family, it's unbelievable, right? It's a pathway to prison. It's a pathway to illiteracy. So I'm only talking about broken down black families. I'm not saying when the black family unit is together. That brings us back to the Winslows, Family Matters, and the greatest show that was ever on television. I do want to get some more people. I want to get some more people. Thank you so much for your question. First of all, uh, hi. Hi. First of all, thank you for coming to the campus. Uh, second you. of all, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to your faith. Um, as a Christian myself, I know you're a Christian. Um, I saw the video you put up uh, about the Christian debate with your husband and Allie B. Mm -hmm. Stuckey. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your faith and how that's kind of inspired you. Yeah. So, the, uh, hmm, well, you know then that I am sort of in between a rock and a hard place right now. I am Protestant. My husband is Catholic. Um, I'm looking more at the Catholic faith for a lot of different reasons. Um, first and foremost, because I, I do believe that males lead the household, and so my children are being raised Catholic right now. Um, and so currently at our house, we go to two different churches, which is not ideal, but for hol holidays, we go to the Catholic church. I was raised by my grandfather. He was by the book, uh, when I say in terms of the Bible, the reason why he was never invested in um, secularism of any sort is because he thought that all of it was the devil. He was like that devout of a Christian. He mm. didn't celebrate any holidays um, and really kept to really just his faith and his family. And so I always say that I was very immersed in scripture when I was a child and then I very much resented it once I got into school because it wasn't cool to be a person that read the Bible. It still isn't cool to be a person that yeah. has faith, especially if you're on a college campus. It's something that is looked down upon. And it's actually one of the pillars of leftism that I wish I had talked about tonight is atheism, which was also crucial to Marxist beliefs. They, you were not allowed to have faith if you lived in a socialist or a communist society mm. uh, because they wanted the government to become your God. They wanted you to believe in nothing else but the government. And you're seeing that take place today as atheism is being encouraged. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've been Hi. wanting this for a while. So my name is Joshua. I am from Brentwood, New York. You guys should Google Joshua Chan, Brentwood, New York. Great person. I'm great. Um, anyway, so just it's about health. I want to switch to, to healthcare. My favorite topic in the world. I love What's healthcare. What's that? Healthcare. Healthcare. Okay. Great. Ms. Owens, Disaster. I'd like to begin by underscoring the importance of healthcare as a fundamental right. Many Americans, including working class white, black, Hispanic, conservatives, mm. believe that everyone should have access to quality healthcare without financial barriers. Additionally, as conservatives also prioritize fiscal responsibility, it's worth noting that the United States spends more money on healthcare than any developed nation, mm. yet lags behind in health outcomes. It's, yep. it's a situation where it seems like we're paying too much and not getting enough in return. 
Conservative, and this is the question now. Conservative healthcare policies have often emphasized individual choice and market-based solutions. Mm -hmm. However, it's, oft, it's been observed that private health insurance companies often prioritize profit margins over patient care and can lead to yeah. administrative efficiencies. In contrast, universal healthcare systems as seen in many developed countries not only ensure that healthcare is a human right for all, but also achieve a greater cost effectiveness and efficiency. Yeah. From a moral and fiscal standpoint, it's a compelling argument to eliminate the middleman, reduce administrative costs, and negotiate lower drug prices to make healthcare more accessible and affordable for all Americans. Yeah. Lastly, no one in this room likes their health insurance company. No one. Yeah. Essentially, they, 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 especially when the health insurance companies deny care. People like their doctors. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Last question, sorry, sorry. Okay, I get it, I get so, uh, it. how can conservative, health, conservative healthcare policies yeah. align with these moral principles of equity and compassion and ensure that everyone can access healthcare without financial hardship? Okay, and okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah. We're going to do two, go more, ahead, go ahead. two more questions after this, maybe? Okay, that's a long one. Two more, guys, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to all of you. Um, so, First and foremost, the healthcare system is an absolute disaster. I have an entire episode where I sat down with someone and discussed this. Um, people wrongly believe that what's currently happening is our, our healthcare in America is an example of capitalism in the free markets. It absolutely is not. It is the exact opposite. Um, the fact that you walk in to a, a clinic, you don't know what anything costs. You're essentially blindfolded. You go to the hospital and then you get a magical bill and they say, oh, that Tylenol that you had, we didn't tell you it cost $400 for one tablet, is, is just completely wrong. America is not an example of free markets in being able to actually choose. Um, so that is that is the first problem, is that the bureaucracies, everything behind it just needs to completely die. If we actually had a free market solution to healthcare, and it's interesting because I'm married to someone that's from the UK, where yes, they do have government-sponsored healthcare be the NHS, but it's a disaster and they're all able to pay privately and they're able to compete and give people the lowest, the lower price, it, it's phenomenal. So an example of that that Charlie Kirk always gives is LASIK surgery. Back when LASIK surgery was being covered by insurance, it was astronomical, the price to get your eyes fixed. And then insurance said, well, no longer cover it. We consider it to be cosmetic. And now you can get your eyes fixed with LASIK for like $3,000. So it went from being $25,000 per night to $3,000 because they allowed competition. So when health insurance companies were actually removed from the equation, it then became a free market environment and doctors were going, okay, I'll compete and here's how much I'm willing to do it for. So all of that needs to be disrupted so that doctors can actually compete for our dollars. And I think the health insurance companies are an, an, an absolute scam. And I hope that it collapses in the near future. So I'm trying to get two more questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But health, it's an important topic, so I'm glad you brought it up. Hi. Um, so you mentioned earlier about the importance of reading and how that helps people be more enlightened and speak um, and think more freely. What do you think about that um, when we're thinking about book bans happening in states like Florida? Um, so I want to be careful uh, because now we're getting a lot of books and I'm not sure that they are the books that should be in classrooms like White Fragility, which they're you know passing around, which is just really state topics that are being implanted into people's head. Um, I'm talking about, you know, true education, like people actually learning hard academics and not fluffy ideologies. Um, but the, what book ban are you talking about when they're banning like CRT? Uh, I believe there's been a variety of books um, related to... But they're to not banning you from buying them. They're saying we're not going to have them in the school system. Uh, yes, at school, yeah, libraries, totally fine. and it's also with LGBTQ plus books and related topics. For kindergartners, yeah. I, I think sexuality and uh, little five-year-olds don't mix. Oh, wow, interesting. When she talked about faith and the family and how our grandfather was uh, our grandfather was Christian and would read the Bible and all of that and how school in schools we're not allowed to talk about faith or you were shamed or whatever. So it wasn't cool to talk about your Christianity or your religion and all. I laughed because it was the same with me. Um, I'm from a Christian home and my mom is Anglican, by the way, and my dad would make us read the Bible every day, morning and night. We had morning devotion, we had evening devotion, night devotion, and we could not talk about it. So it was shameful, and lots of people would see you like a Christian per 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 person or all of that. And because you wanted to fit in or wanted to fit in or belong, so people would shame you for being a christian or shaming shame you for your faith and all of that but as time grew as i grew older i began to realize that 
there was no point of me being ashamed i mean that was a phase of my life there was no point of me being ashamed of my faith and now i can boldly talk about my faith that is who i am and you don't have to agree with me with my faith or whatever but it is my faith and yeah it's slowly becoming the thing that people are now boldly talking about their faith and it's beautiful to see that people don't get shamed anymore for talking the, for talking about their faith talking about the healthcare system in america and in uk i've heard tons of people talk about it and yeah absolutely most of the things in the, the clinic or healthcare most of them are not free and people expect things to be free or prices to be low when most things are not cheap and for one i really don't know much about the healthcare system so i'm not going to talk about it because i'm not familiar with it but i'm also going to be reading up to learn more more to know how it works and what laws are applicable or what is applicable to all of these things but i'm sure tons of people who know these things can also share contribute to this so we we'll learn also or learn about it but yeah this was interesting and these just don't get old these were interesting questions that were asked here yeah, all the same but I also love your contribution to this. I'm sure tons of people have a lot of things to contribute or to share in the comment down below. You can also share other useful information you think might be really helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and all of that stuff. And until next time, see you in the next video.